We're going to get started. I'm already two minutes late, and uh, but I'm going to I'm going to get started anyway. I I, I told Brother Sam. Uh, I said Brother Lindsey will. I'm telling you, he was very staunch about getting started on time. He said, if you the later you start, the later they'll be coming in. And uh, I believe him. I do, too. Amen. Let me make some quick announcements tonight. And this is one of those things why you ought to be at church on time is when you start making these kind of announcements. And you, and you missed them. We're having a baby shower tonight. And uh, this is for uh, Sister Humphrey. She's not here. <laughs> she will be. And I hope that she knows it because she missed the announcements. Uh, then, uh, of course, her grandmother's visitation was today from 2 to 4. The funeral will be at 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning. That's at Limley's. And then uh, the family will eat after the funeral here uh, somewhere around 12-ish, I guess. Uh, so you can bring your food, drop it off. Sister Luana will be here from 7.30-ish uh, until... Uh, that dinner, so uh, she'll be around. You can drop it off. She'll she'll be in the office here, so no problem there. Uh, May the 17th, we're having a, a teacher's meeting that morning at 8.30. We will have some healthy breakfast to eat there, donuts and stuff. Uh, T-shirt sales are due tonight. Uh, we, got some, uh, we got some seniors. Emily's, okay. Uh, so see Sister Mary Lou if you want a T-shirt. Uh, then that that kind of threw me off track there. So, yeah, that's why I don't like. Yeah, I can't hardly. Let's see. Well, we're glad to have you here tonight. Let's start. Got some announcements. Let's go back to the start. Let's start all over again. Uh, we we've got some seniors that are graduating. Kaylin White, stand up, Kaylin. She's so privileged to be the only senior in the building tonight. She's graduating. May the Lord bless you with all the currency that's coming in. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we're going to be recognizing our seniors here uh, in a week or so. Uh, her, uh, Miss Garrison, Whitney Garrison, uh, and then uh, Amber. I can't remember her last name. Amber M., <laughs> And uh, that's, boy, he's going to make a good pastor one of these days. <laughs> but anyway, uh, then uh, uh, Brother Eddie Brown's daughter, uh, is grad they, those two are graduating from Pottsville. And then, uh, do we have anybody from Dover? Anyway, you can just figure it out. We're going to have about four, and there are five or so. Then uh, Brother Chris is graduating Tech. Uh, and then uh, Brother Bowley's got a granddaughter graduating Tech. And... Uh, I told Brother Jimmy, I've been to one gradu one tech graduation in my lifetime, and it was my son-in-law. And that just happened because I liked him. I like everybody. But, I, you know, uh, Brother Chris, he can't hear. Can you hear me over there? Okay. <laughs> I just bragged on you. And uh, <laughs> but he, he's excited about that. He really <laughs> care less. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, moving right along. So we got uh, those, then, and Brother Chris has got a, he's got a little party going on here after graduation. He graduates at 10 o'clock. Uh, and I'm getting all down to this. Jason, Brother brother uh, Mike Freeman's son, he, he's gaining a daughter-in-law on May the 16th, May the 16th at 2 o'clock. Now, uh, the invitation came to the church, addressed to the church. We put it on the bulletin board. It's at Lee's Chapel, 2 o'clock. And uh, so... I read through that that everybody was invited, and uh, I believe that's the way it was. And so uh, that's on Sister Brenda. All right. Sister Brenda's got a grandson graduate from Dover. That'd be old uh, Mr. Dotson, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I know you're not proud of him. <laughs> Just like, uh, amen. What an accomplishment. So, uh all these graduations are going on. It's that time of year, and so uh, that's that's awesome. All right. Well, I got myself out there, and I got all of you informed, uh, basically the best I could, and took my time doing that so folks could get here and, and uh, get ready. We come to have church tonight. Amen. It's good to have John and Tasha down tonight. 
unfortunate circumstances that brings them down here, but we're glad they're here uh, with us tonight. Look forward to being in service with them. But guess who else showed up tonight? The Lord. Amen. How do you know, Pastor? Because he said, where as many as two or three of you gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Real quickly, before I go any further, Brother Coe and I, have been, we're talking again, but we're going, we're going to be having a four-wheeler ride uh, on Memorial Day weekend. And so uh, next week, that'll be in the bulletin that we'll finalize the times and all that stuff. But uh, get your old four-wheeler out, blow the dust off of it, get ready for some new dust. Amen. So, but we're going to have a good time. Always have a good time. We'll be stopping at every cemetery we see. Ain't that right, Sister Charlene? We'll be looking and wondering how those folks died. Amen. We wonder about stuff like that. You see a, a grave with a mama and the baby died, and mama a couple days later. Makes me think about how, how blessed we are to live in, in, in the hour, hour that we live in. Let's stand together tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. How many of you tonight got a need in your life, in your family? Something that you know that God can take care of? Because He can take, he can take care of everything. And so tonight, we're just going to just hold your hand up for a little bit. Not, not for somebody to see, but just, just acknowledging, God, I, I know you're in control. You know what this hand represents tonight. and We're believing you for it. Let's cry out to him. Father, we come to you right now. In the name that's above every name, the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for your great grace and your mercy. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you tonight, God, because we know in our knower tonight that what we bring to you, Lord, we bring in complete confidence, Lord, that you're the healer, you're the deliverer, and, Lord, you're the one that sets the captive free. You're the one that saves the lost. And every hand that's lifted up representing a loved one, Lord, that's lost and undone. Lord, not, not knowing the way that tonight, God, wherever they may be, your spirit, Lord, will be there with them and go there and convict them and draw them, Lord, to the saving grace that's in Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we ask that you just greatly, Lord, tonight, instruct us and direct us in this service. Lord, we know that the greatest form of worship is our obedience to you. Lord, we pray that tonight, God, we could just follow after you. Run after you tonight, Lord. Be obedient to you tonight. Lead us in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. There's blessed time that's coming, coming soon. Well, it may be the morning or at noon. the way of the bride, united with the groom. We shall see.
Coming soon.
God will fix it all right. How many knows that's true tonight? While it'll all be over. singer and just had enough wind. I don't care if I was good or not. Amen. Because I believe that we're living on the brink of eternity. Woo! Hallelujah. That trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ's going to rise. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Amen. With them forever to be with the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Ain't that a comforting thought? I know it is because said Paul said comfort you Therefore, one another with these words. Oh, what a time we're going to have over there. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Sister Luana, can you sing a little bit? Ain't no grave. Going to hold my body down. This old world's trying to suppress the church, but Jesus is trying to, he's trying to wake us up. I said the Lord's trying to wake the church up in this hour. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the same hope we had 10 years ago is the same hope we got tonight. The same hope the church had 50 years ago is the same hope that we have tonight. He's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I don't change. Hallelujah. He said, heaven and earth can pass away, but my word will never change. I'll never, it'll never pass away. Hallelujah. He said, I'll never leave you comfortless. Hallelujah. He said, I'll pray the Father. He'll send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. He done that. Hallelujah. Tonight, church, we don't have to look at our shoes. We can look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. There's no reason. This world is the one. Amen. That ought to be distraught tonight, not the church. Amen. If there's anybody hopeless, it needs to be that world crowd out there because we've got all the hope. We're prisoners of hope. Oh, ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down I like that part when it says When I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna oh, get up get up Gonna get up Get up, get up, 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 up. Cause there ain't no grave Gonna yeah. hold
picture you know I remember the old Carmen videos and stuff and I can just picture the devil having a conversation with his demons right now saying haven't you destroyed that nation haven't you heaped it on them? why am I hearing them sing the praises of Zion on a Sunday night before they got to go back out in this world tomorrow why are they lifting their voices up like that tonight because we got a promise Amen. I guarantee you there's folks in here tonight that this week the devil's tried to convince you they ain't even a heaven anymore. Amen. That there ain't even a heaven. How I know that is, is Brother Arnold preached this morning that the devil don't do nothing new. He just keeps trying to tax this week. He come against me this week with the very same thing, just trying to, as bad as things are, you know. And you know what? The Bible says that I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. But He has revealed them by His Spirit. Amen. I know by my spirit today that God's alive and He's well on the throne and that there's a heaven. Amen. I know that there's a great cloud of witnesses gathered together up there waiting on us. Amen. They're waiting on us. The Bible said that they're waiting... For a city whose maker and builder is God. Amen. There's a place that's coming, Brother Randy. I'm, I'm not going to be convinced at this last time. Amen. I'm going to hang out just like my forefathers did in the, in, in the Hebrews 11 chapter by faith. By faith, we're going to hang on to this thing. By faith, we're expecting the trumpet to sound. By faith, he's going to step out on the cloud. By faith, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And by faith, amen, I'm leaving with them. Amen, I'm not getting left behind. I'm going when they do, Sister Susan. By faith, I'm going to go. If tomorrow comes, I'm going to go into my workplace. And Jesus is going to carry me through everything i got to do tomorrow. Amen, he's going to strengthen me and keep me. Man, man, I feel like one of those things that Brother Arnold's got to pump his fireplace with to get the... Come on, folks. We're the end-time church. Amen. We're the ones that the Lord looked all the way from Alpha <laughs> to Omega. And he said, these are going to be the last ones. And he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on them. And their sons and daughters are going to prophesy. And their old men are going to dream dreams. And their young men are going to have visions. And I'm going to pour out my spirit in that generation. Folks, let's get with it. Amen. He wants to pour his spirit out on us. I just want to be a cup. Amen. I think Sister Luana just you sing a song about cup turned up. Fill it up, Lord. Amen. Amen. We just throwed the plan out the window tonight. Amen. Well, let's have our ushers come. That's a good place to jump back in at. <laughs> Amen. They're coming to take up tithes and offerings, and they're going to do that. And uh, we got uh, Brooklyn and Shelby coming to sing tonight. And... Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you tonight. Lord, we ask you, God, to bless those that are obedient, God, to the Word of God tonight and with through their giving. Father, I pray, God, that you give it back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Lord. 
Father, I pray, God, that you'd pour out a blessing in their life so great that they couldn't withhold it, Lord, that they'd give unto others, Lord. They'd bless others with the abundance, Lord, and, and with what you're giving, Lord, to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Seated above as a throne in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only sign, perfect and spot.
Praise the Lord. Well, we got our friends back down from up north. We'll ask them to testify tonight. Are they singing? Well, I'd like to say that I love the Lord and I'm just so thankful for everything he's done for me and he's just really blessed me with a lot and I'm just so thankful I thought I was going to get to say something she was going to sing uh, I love the Lord uh, words and songs really minister to me that, you know I love the words on the wall it's, you know it says uh everyone overcome and that song they just sang and somebody might think well that means they think everybody's going to heaven that ain't so no that means that's begging everyone overcome that's begging them you know i know a lot of times i think uh hell's you know that's that, well I, I get you know i get pretty rough on people sometimes and myself and i think you know you got this person doing that and isis doing this and i i want to see judgment on them but uh you know, God's not willing that any should perish. You know, God wants Hillary to go to heaven. He wants He wants ISIS to go to heaven. You know, He's not willing that any should perish. And, you know, the words I, I seen a song they were singing this morning. It had it had uh, God's name or it said it said God, but it was lowercase, and that bothered me. Is on the screen this morning, and uh, at Batavian, I was, uh, I, which I mean, you miss things. You know, I understand a lot of people miss things like that, and I it used to bother me, and I and it did this morning, and I and I God spoke to me and said, I'm a lot more worried about God being capitalized in your life than on a screen. You know, God may not be capitalized in my life. If he was, I probably wouldn't even know that screen wasn't right, you know. But uh, I think she just decided what she's going to sing. It's plain and simple. Well, high on a mountain from where he ascended
feel, I don't know, I feel so overwhelmed. You know, I, I have a brother that just lost his mom. And I went to his house the other day, and it just creeped me so bad. He was drinking, and I thought, oh, God, why? I know it's a promise, and I believe I'm going to see him saved, but we can only just know the time is so near. We've got to be ready. You just don't know. Just help me, please pray for him. And, and I got a sister that's lost too, and she needs God. Please just help me pray for him. Mama. Man. I tell you, I was going to say and ask you to go and tell three people that I believe that he's coming back just like he said. And you know, I know in my hearts of hearts, I've been here in churches long enough to know you can do that. Some folks will, and they'll say this and that as they go and greet others. But here, and I don't even know what you're going to preach on, Brother Sam. i got an unction. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, if we couldn't go to three people in this church service and tell them, look them in the eyes and say, I believe that Jesus is coming back, just like he said, we got a problem. We got a problem. If we couldn't in this church house walk up to three believers and tell them that I believe, I can look you in the eye, Brother Jack, tell you I believe that Jesus is coming back. Just like he said, Brother Jason, I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. But the problem is we couldn't walk up. There'd be people that we feel like we couldn't walk up to and look and we'd feel uncomfortable. And if in this house we can't even do what God's commissioned us to do, what are we going to do in the world? What are we going to do in the world, folks? It's time to get what we say we got. Amen. It's time to get a hold of it. You know, we, well, you better come on, brother. Come on. Amen. Do you, do you ever wish that, that Jesus would just get up a load right now and just, I mean, I was ready a while ago. I'm ready now. <laughs> I wish he'd, you know, just got up a great big load. <laughs> I, one preacher I know said, I don't care if he's just got an S10 load, I want to be riding shotgun. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm ready. I, you know, sometimes I don't know why we just don't go ahead and have church. <laughs> It, would, it wouldn't have bothered me a bit not to be able to get up here tonight because I felt something. I still feel a little something way right down here. Woo! I mean, I believe the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Oh, my goodness gracious. I, if you don't feel something in this house tonight, your wood's wet. Woo! Lord, in mercy, help me, Lord. Woo! I don't know if I can preach or not, Brother Jimmy. <laughs> Woo! Oh, you may see me shaking, but it ain't because I'm nervous. Woo! Glory to God. Brother Jimmy, you should have just went ahead. Hallelujah. I was listening to one of the songs they were singing a while ago, and, and I, I, I can't remember anything anymore. I'm too old to remember. You know, sometimes your mind, when you get older, it... It kind of leaves you. So I wrote something down, and it said, and it said uh, uh, where did I write it? <laughs> Going to short and t uh, shout and tell the glad story. And I got to thinking about that, and it, it just goes right along with what I'm going to try to preach tonight. They were talking about when you're in heaven, but we need to be shouting and telling the glad story right now. You know, Brother Jimmy hit it right on the head when he said we can't go to three people in God's house and tell them that we believe that Jesus is coming back. So how hard is it going to be outside of these walls? It's, and, and you know, it seems to me that, that my family is the people that are hardest to witness to. 
and, and we, you know, we constantly, or I constantly ask for prayer for somebody in my family, but, you know, everybody's got a soul. And when I get to heaven, there's, there's, some of my family's probably not going to be there. And there's going to be people there that, that I don't know. And, and why didn't I witness to them? It's, it's just not an easy thing to do sometimes. Let me, uh, let me get a little unserious here for just a second. Brother Arnold, uh, it's, it's not a, I hope this builds up your faith. It's not a bad thing to go through life with one eye. So I just thought I'd tell you that I have an extra one at home in my drawer. <laughs> and for a nominal fee, that, that, well, it's blue. <laughs> so I hope that builds your faith up a little. <laughs> if you weren't here this morning, Brother Arnold's going to have a little bit of surgery Wednesday on an eye. And, and brother, I love you. I love you, and I'm praying for you, and I know that God's going to take care of you. Well, if you've even turned the TV on or, or looked at a newspaper, you know that uh, somewhere overseas there's been a big earthquake and thousands are dead, and, and somewhere there's been a, a volcano eruption, and, and people are rioting all over the United States. And even down in Russellville, Arkansas, people are marching. You know, that's close to home. And you see, that those are, those are sad things for some people. But for we that are covered by the blood, you know, the Bible says, Look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. And that's the way I look at those things. It's just another sign, that, just like we've been singing about, that Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. And if there was just one thing that the Lord was going to ask us when we got to heaven, and he, he knows, you know, our, our life is an open book to him. But if there was just one thing he was going to ask us, I believe he would ask us, who did you bring with you? I really believe that's a question that he would ask each and every one of us. Who did you bring with you? If you have your Bibles tonight, and I hope you do, Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 6 of the book of Matthew. And I, I'm going to use quite a bit of scripture tonight, and uh, most of it's in red. Matthew, chapter 6. I'm going to read three short verses there. If you'll stand for God's word. Beginning in verse 19. It says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the service thus far. God, for your presence in this service. God, I ask you, Lord, to bless these people that are here tonight, Lord. And God, I ask you to anoint your word. I know it's already anointed. And help me, Lord God, to say what you'd have me to say. I love you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I told Brother Arnold the other day in a text, the title for this message, and I, I usually don't title my messages because I just don't, but let me ask you a question. We've all said tonight that we believe Jesus is coming soon. Everybody believe that? Everybody believe that? Do you really believe that Jesus is coming soon? Then don't hide the treasure. Now, I know most people, when they read these three scriptures, they're probably talking about money, maybe talking about tithing or whatever. But I want to talk to you tonight about a treasure that you and I, hopefully you and I, have found and it's uh, salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. What a treasure. Amen. There is no greater treasure than salvation with the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, we've got people all over the world that are 
uh, if you turn on TV now, it's, it's all reality shows. And, and I th there's one on there where people are, are digging out in the ocean with a, a big bucket, looking for gold, looking for a treasure. Uh, people are climbing mountains, rock mountains, and digging in the rocks, looking for a treasure. Uh, there's all kinds of people looking for treasure. And you and I have found the greatest treasure, the treasure of salvation. And I'm not looking for a treasure. You know, the Bible says that one day this earth is going to burn with a fervent heat. And all the treasures that they've been digging for and looking for, all the gold that they've amassed, uh, fortunes, it's just going to burn up. But the treasure we have is going to let us live forever and ever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but, but, you know, he commended us. He, he commanded us. He said... Uh, in fact, he said, don't hide the treasure. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, Brother Arnold started on it this morning. You see, he didn't say, uh, go ye and live it in front of them. Now, we do have to live it in front of them. I'm not arguing that point. He said, go and preach. Sometimes you just have to talk to them, John. Brother John, sometimes we just have to tell them how it is. Show them the love, yes. Tell them the love, yes. He said, go and, and, and preach the gospel. Don't hide the treasure. You know, there's a, um, in Luke chapter 12, there's a story about this fellow. And, and he, he, you know, he, he prospered and his crops prospered and, and uh, his barns got full. And, and he said, well, I'll just build new ones. <laughs> I'll just build bigger barns and, and gather more treasure. And you know what the Lord told him after he did all that? He said, you fool, thou fool, this day or this night, your soul will be required of thee. In uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, I believe it is, uh, there was a man there, and, and he said he planted vineyards, and he, he built houses, and he, he had fruit trees, and he made pools of water, and, and he had servants and great possessions. And Solomon said, it's all just vanity. It's just going to burn up. But there's one treasure in this life that's going to last forever and ever, and we need to share that, that treasure. I thought about, uh, you know, in, in chapter 3 of the book of Acts, it talks about uh, Peter and John going into the gate beautiful. And it says there was a man there lame from his mother's womb. And uh, Peter, and you know, he was, he was begging for alms. He was, he was asking for money. And, and Peter and John walked by and, and he, he begged alms of them. And Peter uh, told him, he said, look on us. You know, there's people out there that are looking on us. They're watching us. And you know, it's been said a thousand times, with the, we're the only Bible that a lot of people read. <laughs> but I want to be a Bible that speaks, not only shows. He said, look on us. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand. Yes, sir. And lifted him up. He's sharing a treasure that he had. Now, he, you know, that's a healing story, I know. But that could also be a salvation story. A salvation. You know, there's people out there that are just waiting for you and I to say something to them, to show them something. That they, they're, they're, you know, before I got saved, I, I, looked in, uh, I looked in the bottom of a whiskey bottle. I looked in the bottom of a beer can. I looked in a marijuana cigarette looking for something looking for something that I needed, that I didn't know what I needed. But then I found the treasure that I was looking for, that I really needed, that I really wanted, that I had to have. But now that I've got it, I've been commissioned just like you have to share it with the lost and dying world. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Go to uh, Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Not just live it, like I said. Go to James 2, verse 20. You see, we can live it, but then the Bible says, 
But well, thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. We've got to put some, we've got to put some works. We've got to put some works. We've got to put some works. We've got to put some works with our faith. And part of those works is telling somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. It's witnessing to somebody. You know, I, um, people can watch our lives, like I said, but I've got some friends that are great, great people. I mean, they live a great life, a better life than I probably do. I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about as far as, as a person looking at them and thinking, well, that person must know the Lord. But they're, no, they're not saved. They're not covered by the blood. You can look at those people all you want to. But if they don't say something to you, what have they done? Be a witness. Be a witness. John 21. Jesus. John 21, verse 15 through 17. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than thee? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lamb. Verse 16. He saith to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And verse 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knewest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. You know, Jesus, when he spoke to people back in that day, he, he spoke to them in things that, that they could understand. Um, a lot of shepherds in that day and time. Um, and he wasn't talking about feed them grain or hay or not to us. He's talking about feed them the love of Christ. Witness to them. Feed them what they need. Sometimes, some, you know... Don't get me wrong, I, I know the church had a, a cornbread and bean supper last night for the community, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. That's a great thing. Uh, that's a needful thing, and, and, and that's what we should be doing. And ho I, I didn't go. I, 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 I wish now that I had of, but I, I hope when somebody walks in that door that's lost and undone, and, and I, I know Brother Jimmy and Brother Arnold take care of these things, but I hope somebody said something to them about Jesus. You see, we, we have come under the mindset that, that witnessing to somebody is inviting them to church. Now, that's well and that's good, but that's really not sharing Jesus Christ with them. And that's really not sharing the love of Jesus with them to invite them to church. Most people that you invite to church aren't coming anyway. Uh, that's sad, but it's true. Uh, they may tell you they're coming. How many times have you been said, yeah, I'll be there, but they don't show up. But when you share the love with them, you see, that's what, that's what this world is looking for, that they, don't, they just don't realize that they're looking for love. They're looking for love in the wrong, all the wrong places. That's a good old gospel song. I mean, most of you don't know that, but... That's one of the things that sticks in my mind from back before I was saved. <laughs> but they're looking for love. And we have that love to give them if we'd only not hide the treasure. Matthew 5, verse 14 and 16. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, the key word there, I think, is works. Like I said, you know, it's good to live it, but we've got to put some works with it. In... Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 7, 
there is a story about four leprous men and it says that they're sitting outside the gate of the city and they look at one another and they come to this great conclusion that if we just sit here, we're going to die. You know, there was a famine in the land or uh, anyway... If we sit here, we're just going to die. So let's just go over to the Sumerian's camp, and if they kill us, okay, but if they don't, we'll live. You see, if God sends you to somebody to witness to, He's going to go before you. He's going to prepare the way before you get there. So they went to the Syrian's camp, and, and I'm sure you've all read the story know it better than I do, but when they got there, they were all gone. Imagine that. Every one of them were gone. But they just left everything that they had. I mean, there was food there. There was horses there. There was garments. There was everything they could possibly need. And I think the story says maybe they went into one tent and blah, 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 blah. And, and finally a light went off in one of them's head. Can you see salvation in this story? A light went off in somebody's head and said, Hey, Yes, we do not well. Let's, let's go back and, and tell the king about all the spoil that's here. Everything. See, they were going to go back and share the treasure. Salvation had come to the city. So they went back and, and, and you know, they told the king about it. Of course, he didn't believe it. But they saved the whole city. They shared the treasure that they had found just like you and I need to be sharing the treasure that we found. I said before I, when I started that the hardest people for me to witness to is, is my family. And, you know, I sometimes I meet with uh, some fellas that, that aren't saved and They know that I go to church. They know that I try to preach a little bit. Uh, they know that I try to uh, teach Sunday school a little bit because I, I've told them that. But, you know, I, I'm afraid sometimes that if I say too much, I'll offend them and run them off. But we all know who, what, who sends fear to us. It's not God. He doesn't give us a spirit of fear. John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Power to be a witness. You see, man, if I wasn't so old, Brother Arnold, I would have took off running a while ago like I used to when I was about 45. But I'm... You know, my legs don't work like they used to. My knees aren't buckled. My knees buckle now. And that's well, and that's good, and I love it. And I love it when this sister starts to dance. Oh, it just thrills my soul. I love it to see people shout. I love it when Brother Arnold gets up here and starts spinning around in a circle. I love it. And it's well, and it's good. But that's not what the Holy Ghost was sent for. I, I busted somebody's bubble, I know. But that's the truth. He was sent as a comforter and to give us power to not hide the treasure. That's why the Holy Ghost is here today. That's why we need the Holy Ghost more today than ever because we believe that Jesus Christ is soon coming and we've got people out there that are lost and undone that need to hear about the love of Jesus and need to know that salvation is eternal and there is a devil in hell that wants their soul and we can stop him 
in his tracks. If we'll just get the boldness, and that, that's uh, Did you know that's really all we're expected to do? <laughs> Is go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That's all we're expected to do. Look, uh, Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? We don't have to be afraid. If God's for us, why is it so hard for us? Why is it so hard for me? Maybe it's not hard for y'all, but I believe there's somebody here tonight that's having trouble maybe with somebody you work with, maybe somebody you um, have coffee with, maybe a relative, I don't know, but somebody here is having trouble witnessing. You want to, you just don't do it. You're just afraid to. I've been there. I still do it. I still do it. I get so tired, and I say it too. If, if they'll just open the door, every door I walk up to has a knob on both sides. Why am I so afraid? Why don't I reach out and take the knob and open it? I know we can't beat them over the head with a 10-pound Bible. There, there was a, there's a, I'm not tooting my own horn because it hasn't worked yet. If it works, I may toot my own horn. But there's a little girl at Hector. I say little girl. She's probably 25 years old. That's a little girl to me. Every time I see that little girl, I look her in the eye and I say, Jesus loves you. That's, isn't that simple? Yeah, why, why should we be ashamed to do that? Because, first of all, it's the truth. <laughs> Brother John already told us he even loves ISIS. He doesn't love their ways, but he loves them. He loves their soul. He, he, he desires their soul to be saved. Why is it so hard for us? <laughs> There's not anybody that was any meaner than me, except maybe Terry. <laughs> I love you, brother. No. There's nobody that was ever any meaner than you, even if you weren't mean. He loved us all. We were all lost and undone without God and His Son, the song says. But somebody witnessed to me and somebody witnessed to you evidently or you wouldn't be here tonight. It's just an easy thing to do. Why don't we do it? Singers, would y'all come back, please? Somebody here Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. I don't want him to be ashamed of me. And I want to do my best to do what he told me to do, and that was go preach the gospel. Even if it was just to one person. Because I don't want to stand before him and me say, Sam, who did you bring with you? And me have to say, nobody. You know, you, you don't know what you might say to somebody today that will come back to him a year from now and they say, I need to get saved. Man, I love to see people shout, like I said. I love to, used to love to run, still wish I could. But there's nothing any more glorious than to see somebody come to an altar. That's the ultimate healing. Couldn't ask for anything better, Brother Jar. That's what it's all about. It's not about coming to church and having a big time, which I love it. But it's about seeing people saved. It's about building the kingdom. Not building Scottsville Assembly of God. Not building Russellville Assembly of God. But God's kingdom. Let me ask you tonight. Are you here and there's somebody 
that you want to witness to but you're having problems you just for some reason just can't seem to can't seem to get the words out if that's you tonight God sent the Holy Ghost to give us that power that we don't have to fear if that's you tonight would you come up just kneel down and say God go with me help me Lord to be the witness that you've called me to be I think we could probably all come to an altar for that I know I could